Hello and welcome to the channel. Today on Living Abroad, I'm going to show you five ways of renting an apartment here in Istanbul, Turkey. And stick around until the end of the video and I'll share my secret of what I do to rent a place when I travel. My name is Alex and you can live through me. So before you think about even renting a place here in Istanbul, you have to realize if you don't know, Istanbul is very big with 16 million people. So I highly recommend before you consider renting a place is to figure out which area you want to live in. And for me, that was one of the most difficult parts because I had no clue where to rent a place or what I'm even looking for, right? So I highly recommend you check out uh, a channel um, called Aladdin's Turkey. I'll put the link down below. Take a look and he does a really good job at explaining the different neighborhoods and regions of Istanbul. So have a look there first and then once you kind of know where you want to stay, then come back and uh, I'll show you how to rent an apartment here in Istanbul. Option number one, Airbnb. Now uh, let's take a look on how to use Airbnb if you haven't already done so before and then I'll tell you some good things and some bad things about Airbnb. Airbnb is my go-to place when I travel and I need to rent a place. Just go on the Airbnb website, airbnb.ca or .com, choose your place. And for this video, we'll do June 1st until June 30th. Press search. And this will provide you a list of places that are available to rent within those uh, time frames and dates that you've chosen. Uh, make sure that you select the entire place unless you do want to share with somebody however i'm not sure how smart that is given the pandemic and you know being crowded in different places um so yeah choose a <laughs> let's see here so choose the entire place and you can set your price range for this we can just set let's say about 300 to whatever whichever your budget is um we'll keep it low 700 and from here you can see the list of places on the right here with the map or on the left with pictures and details if you've never used Airbnb before I recommend it I've been using it for about five years now I've never had a problem the only time was in Thailand where the host was about an hour late and it felt like an eternity after like a 24-hour flight from Canada so that sucked but yeah so Airbnb is a great option and uh, we'll get into some cons and pros about Airbnb. This is how you go through the website and make sure you read the cancellation policy as well as any additional information. A great thing to do is always look at the reviews, not just the pictures because sometimes they take the pictures from a long time ago or they're not very accurate, right? So always go down to the reviews, make sure you read the most recent ones. And if you get a good feeling, then you can just contact the host. So that one was Airbnb, your first option. Now that we've taken a look at how to rent a place using Airbnb website, here are some cons about using Airbnb. Some of the bad things are that Airbnb can be one of the most expensive ways of uh, renting a place. Aside from staying at a hotel, it can be really costly. And also another bad thing is you're kind of committing to an area or a home, an apartment without even seeing it, right? So make sure that, uh, you read the comments, look at the pictures, and then you can choose Airbnb. But some of the good things about Airbnb is that all the hosts are registered, right? So you can kind of feel safe and have peace of mind knowing that it's professional. And if you have any problems, you can contact the Airbnb staff and they'll do their best to help you out. And uh, another good thing about Airbnb, everything's included, right? So you, you don't have to worry about getting your water and electricity hooked up and gas and things like that. It's very convenient for people that wanna have like a short-term stay but uh, for long term probably not the best option that was airbnb and here's a living abroad tip for airbnb when you use airbnb make sure you select flexible cancellation right so when you do that once you go to the place if for whatever reason you don't like it you can simply just cancel and maybe lose one night's worth of uh, rent as opposed to maybe a week or a month long worth of rent that you're going to lose out on so make sure you select flexible air uh, flexible cancellation Option number two is to use Facebook. So just log into your Facebook account, join some uh, apartment rental groups in Istanbul, and you can either post your own like inquiry, put what you want, like your price, where you wanna stay and see who has apartments available, or you can uh, just look at the listings that are already there, contact the owner and rent the place that way. 
here are some negative things. Um, some bad things are things such as third party agents trying to rent out the apartment, right? So you're not renting from directly the owner. Also, another bad thing is that some people try to sublet the apartments, right? So people that already own or at least renting the place, try to rent it out to the next person. Another bad thing is uh, on those groups, a lot of times it's too good to be true. So it's either a sharing flat or you're not really getting the use of the entire apartment. So it can be a little bit misleading. But some good things about using Facebook are the following. Number one is that you get much more discounted prices compared to Airbnb. Another thing is that you get to see a variety of pictures and comments about the place. So you have a better understanding and idea on how to use that. Here's a living abroad tip for Facebook groups. Make sure that you look and see that it's not a shared apartment. A lot of times I see a very good price, but it seems too good to be true. And when I ask a couple questions, I realize it's just a room and not the whole place to yourself. That was option number two, Facebook. Option number three is to use a website called Sahi Bindin. Let's have a quick look at the website and see what it looks like. The third option is a website called Sahi Bindin. For those that are from the US or Canada, this is similar to Craigslist or Kijiji. It's a website where people list secondhand items for sale and it also has apartments and homes for rent. Click on real estate, then choose residential for rent, select flat, and choose the filter option on the top left hand corner. Um, for your address, choose the city you want to stay in. For us, it'll be Turkey. And then if you know maybe the county you want to stay in, you can select that as well. But just for the sake of this video, we'll just leave that empty. Some other things to consider is maybe the number of rooms you would like, or if you like it to be furnished, which I do. So I will select furnished. And a tip, just an insider tip, is that for user status, sorry, not user status, for, where is it? Let's see, from. So choose the owner. This way you can skip like third party people trying to rent out homes and you go directly to the owner. Gives you some more flexibility and definitely cheaper. Here you'll see a list of like different places you can take a look at. So we'll choose this random one. And then from here you can see the ad description. Look at how many rooms there are and if it's furnished as well as if it requires a deposit. A description will tell you some, usually this will be in Turkish. You can just translate it on Google. And also an important factor is the location. So it gives you an idea where the home is. This is option number three. That was Sahi Bindin. So here are some bad things or some negative things about using Sahi Bindin. The first thing is that you have to have a Turkish phone number. So from my understanding is that you have to type in your Turkish phone number to send your confirmation code. And that's how you can start to begin using it. Just because when you have to contact the uh, the person you want to rent it from, you have to be able to keep in touch and communicate, obviously. So that's a negative. Another bad thing is usually it's long-term contracts, right? People are looking for six months to a year. And if you're a traveler, maybe you don't know exactly how long you're going to stay in Turkey. Some good things about Sahih Bindin is probably the most cost effective, right? Because uh, it's more local and the prices reflect that. So uh, it's the cheapest option. Another good thing about using Sahih Bindin is that it's more of a local interaction. So you kind of get, you know, the experience of living like a local as well as paying local prices. And if you're gonna be here long-term for a job or something like that, it's probably your best option. Oh, I almost forgot. Inside a tip, living abroad tip for using Sahib and Din, always choose from the owner because you don't wanna pay commission and you don't wanna have a third party managing all that. And I've heard some bad stories about people being scammed by using agents. So make sure you select from the owner. Option number four is to seek professional help. So you can go ahead and contact a real estate agent in Istanbul. And here are some negative things about using real estate agent and some positive things. Let's start with the negatives. Cost. So when you use obviously their services, you have to pay 10% commission or about one month's worth of rent. And when you consider a deposit first month, last month, commission, uh, it can be a really you know costly thing to do at the beginning. 
another bad thing about using a real estate agent is I've heard some bad things, for example, people not being able to contact the real estate agent or if they have some problems, they're, after they've done the transaction, they kind of have their hands off. Um, some positive things though is that convenience, right? So it's peace of mind knowing that you don't have to look for a place, they do all the communication, they speak English, and most people that rent and use real estate agent from the owner's side has already dealt with some foreigners. So peace of mind in that sense can also be a good thing, right? Also, if you're staying here long term, that one month commission that you pay to the real estate agent might be worth the cost that you'll save down the road, right? So if you're staying six months to a year, this is a great option. And also what they do is they set up three or four or five viewings in a day. So you can go ahead and have like uh, different options to look at and see which one you like by using real estate agent. Here's an insider tip. Don't use real estate agents for me anyway. I just feel like there's no need, right? Because here in Istanbul, uh, I find it backwards. The, the person that's renting has to pay the commission, which is weird to me because everywhere else I've ever traveled, the owner is the one that pays the commission to the real estate agent. That's just my personal uh, feelings about it. So inside a tip is to go ahead and not use them if you can, but it's still an option if you got lots of money, if you just don't want to deal with a headache and uh, just want to get the things done and basically trust in real estate agents. That brings us to our final option. Option number five is to go window shopping. What do I mean? I'll show you. Here's an example of if you just walk in a neighborhood and look up at some of these apartments, you'll see these signs that are offering units for rent. You just simply call them and see if it's still available and schedule a viewing. Now you can see these all around the neighborhoods. You just have to keep an open eye and hopefully when you call someone picks up that speaks English. If not, just use Google Translate and send them a text message. So that's it, right? You can just go ahead and look around the neighborhood and see which places are up for rent. What are some bad things? Uh, firstly, you have to physically be here in Istanbul and in the neighborhood that you're interested in to go ahead and see if there are any places available for rent. Another negative thing is a risk of them not speaking English. You don't know if they can communicate, so you have to use Google Translate. But some good things about it, you're probably gonna find the best deals doing it this way. Another great thing is it's exciting, right? It's an adventure to just go ahead and see what happens. So those are five options that we have renting an apartment here in Istanbul. That was five ways of renting an apartment here in Istanbul, Turkey. Now, before I tell you my method of choosing a place to stay when I travel, take a second to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So this is my way of renting a place long-term when I travel. Firstly, I use Airbnb to rent a place for a few days. This way I'm comfortable and I use that time to see if I like the neighborhood, if I like the apartment itself. And if I do, I contact the host and try to negotiate a discounted rate for myself. And this is a very good method because it's a win-win situation. The owner of the Airbnb gets to have their apartment rented every night of the week and I get a discounted rate. If that doesn't work, then I use that time to go ahead and use a combination of some other methods we discussed like the window shopping method or using different sites and Facebook groups to try and find a place. So while I stay comfortably at the Airbnb, I go and take a look at some apartments if I like them. So that's it guys, uh, let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Which one is the method that you would use? Do you think you'll go ahead and use my way or something else? Let me know. I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.